Here's a new fad, water flossers. Do they replace traditional string floss? Not necessarily, but they do have some benefits. Water flossers work by expressing a very fast, small stream of water that is meant to get in between your teeth and clean the areas you can't brush. Sounds good in theory, and there are some benefits, especially when you mix some mouthwash with that water. But here's the thing, plaque sticks to teeth. It cannot be washed off, it has to be removed. That's why it's not a replacement for traditional string floss. Flossing, when should children start flossing their teeth? Here's the answer. If any baby teeth are touching and you cannot get the toothbrush bristles between the teeth, it's time to grab that floss and get in between their teeth. Can a young child wrap that string between their teeth and get it in the right places? Probably not, but it does mean that you need to start training and teaching them how to do it. And those little wishbone flossers are a great way to learn it. But Remember, floss up and down, up and down, back and forth, back and forth, so that it's actually cleaning and scraping in between the teeth, so you're actually doing your teeth a favor. Hey everybody, again, using your teeth as tools. Not a good idea, check this one out. Oh, that just made me cringe. I felt that in my teeth. Remember, your teeth are not meant to be used as a tool. Use them for what they're meant to be used for, like eating and smiling. If you continually expose your teeth to hard objects like this or to these unnatural pressures they're not meant to sustain, you will break your enamel. I've seen it. Those little cusp tips in the back teeth, the edges of your front teeth, they have weak points and they can break. Don't chew on hard things. I get asked all the time, what is the best toothbrush? Is one brand better than the other? Is one type better than the other? There's so many in the stores nowadays. We got plain Jane toothbrushes. Most of us have used these before. We've got spin brushes. These are great with the kids. Then we've got tongue brushes. We're brushing more than just teeth nowadays. And then we've got the full mouth brush. These are getting popular. And of course, the ultrasonic toothbrush. These are the expensive ones. Are they worth it? And then of course I see things like this. What is that? I don't even know. But which toothbrush is the best? Okay, what about ultrasonic toothbrushes? You know, the expensive ones. They come in many different prices, sometimes from $40 all the way up to $200. Are they worth the money? They have the same ultrasonic technology that a deep cleaning ultrasonic dental instrument that the hygienist or the dentist uses at the dental office when deeper cleanings are needed. They put that technology into this type of toothbrush. Some people fall into the trap of thinking, because it's moving, it's doing all the work. Here's the key with electric toothbrushes or spin brushes. You have to use them in almost the same manner that you use a traditional toothbrush. You've got to make sure that the bristles are penetrating the hard to reach areas. Are cavities genetic? And the answer is perhaps. We all know that cavities can come from a variety of factors. For example, a sugary diet, not brushing your teeth often or well enough, uh, not taking good care of your overall health care. New research has shown that a lot of decay activity can be genetic. For example, we know that bacteria is heavily involved in the decay process, and the bacteria that occur in the mouth that contribute to decay can be passed from mother to child. Second of all, the protective factors that exist in our saliva and in our mouth are also genetic. Furthermore, the shape of our teeth, the consistency and strength of our enamel are all based on genetics. So yes, decay is influenced by our diet and how well we take care of our teeth, but we also know with a strong body of evidence that there are some factors that are out of our control and those can be traced back to genetics. Okay, what about a spin brush? These are very popular with kids and they come with timers. They can come with music and all kinds of tools to help kids know how long they should brush. But are they effective for removing plaque? The edges of the toothbrush need to make sure that they penetrate the gums and in between the teeth. It doesn't necessarily matter if we're brushing in circles, back and forth or up and down, as long as we're making sure that the bristles are sweeping the area where the gums meet the teeth. With kids younger than eight years old, they need supervision. Can these be effective toothbrushes? Yes, they can. Which toothbrushes work the best? Let's start with this one. I call it the plain Jane. It's got edges to it and it can have a different variety of bristle. But is this effective? 
It can be if we're brushing correctly. Ooh, stinky breath. How do you get rid of it? Which mouthwash is best? Here's the thing. Bad breath is caused by a certain type of bacteria that live on your teeth and your gums. They release sulfur gas. That's the root of the bad odors, whether it's coming for your mouth or you can smell it on others. There are things that you can do to reduce it. First of all, brush more often. Get rid of the plaque and all the goop on your teeth. Second of all, look for a mouthwash that has one of two things. Alcohol, which kills bacteria, but also there's another ingredient called chlorine dioxide. That specifically targets the bacteria that releases the sulfur gas. Look for those two ingredients in your mouthwash and you can reduce bad breath. Ugh. Is vaping good for your teeth? Inhaling aerosols from e-cigarettes can cause dry mouth. It reduces the salivary flow. You can't keep your teeth clean. It also increases the bacteria in your mouth that causes decay. It can also lead to gum disease. Vaping good for your teeth? Uh, of course not. First of all, I wanna show you, if you're not brushing regularly, this is what can build up behind your teeth. Behind those teeth in the mirror, that is tartar. That's what happens to when it's not cleaned off. And that tool is called an ultrasonic scaler. That's what it looks like. So not only is plaque can hurt your teeth, look what it's doing to the gums. Don't forget, behind your front teeth, there is a salivary duct and it shoots saliva out. And what is saliva full of? Mineral content, calcium and other minerals. And that can build up on the backs of your front teeth. What you saw in that video is not uncommon. If you haven't been to the dentist for a while, you might have that kind of buildup behind your teeth, but you can see what it can do to your teeth and what it can do to your gums. Get to your dentist. That's right. Looks lovely, doesn't it? But I'm gonna put this in. I've never used one of these and I'm gonna tell you what my opinion is. Are you ready? Here we go. It's also got the ultrasonic technology. Oh, it goes different speeds too. So here's my opinion of this full mouth toothbrush. You know, the benefit is the ultrasonic action. It's doing a lot of work, but it looks like you need to move your teeth around to make sure it's getting the hard to reach spots. I will tell you, it didn't seem to do as good of a job as a manual health toothbrush or the traditional ultrasonic handheld toothbrush can do. There might be people with special needs who can't hold a toothbrush. There might be kids who don't want to use a regular toothbrush. It could be useful in those situations. Baking soda on your teeth, is that a good idea? Well, yes, it is. Baking soda has lots of benefits for your teeth. First of all, it can be a whitening agent and can make your teeth brighter and whiter. Second of all, baking soda contains sodium bicarbonate, which when mixed with water forms a base and it fights the acids and plaque, which can cause cavities. And lastly, Baking soda has been shown to reduce mouth ulcers and sores. And so with those three benefits, go ahead, brush with baking soda. Baking soda can also be abrasive, so only brush with it every now and then, but definitely not every day. Ooh, stinky breath. How do you get rid of it? Which mouthwash is best? Here's the thing. Bad breath is caused by a certain type of bacteria that live on your teeth and your gums. They release sulfur gas. That's the root of the bad odors, whether it's coming for your mouth or you can smell it on others. There are things that you can do to reduce it. First of all, brush more often. Get rid of the plaque and all the goop on your teeth. Second of all, look for a mouthwash that has one of two things. Alcohol, which kills bacteria, but also there's another ingredient called chlorine dioxide. That specifically targets the bacteria that releases the sulfur gas. Look for those two ingredients in your mouthwash and you can reduce bad breath. Ugh. Hey everybody. Okay, using your teeth as a tool, not a good idea. Check this out. Don't do it. Using your teeth like a tool is asking for trouble. Your teeth were not meant to break open bottle caps or chew on nails or other hard things. I've seen that those cusps, those pointy parts of your back teeth can break. They have weak points. Remember, use your teeth for eating. What age should I take my child for their first dental visit? And what should we expect at that first visit? This is a common question amongst most parents of young children. Here's the answers. 
your child should go to their first dental visit as early as the first teeth eruption in the mouth, which can be as young as six months, sometimes as early as three or four months, but it definitely shouldn't be any later than one year of age. Why is that? Are we truly worried that young children are gonna get cavities on their brand new baby teeth? Well, it's possible, but the biggest benefit is you get to introduce your child to the dentist in a non-threatening environment or with a non-threatening condition. We're gonna clean their teeth. We're gonna count their teeth. We're gonna take x-rays. And so it introduces that young child what a dental visit is all about in a non-threatening and sometimes really fun way. 